Support Wrestle Talk. And I guess that's why they call it the news. Hello, everyone. It's the end of another week, and what a week it's been. Roman teamed up with God to take on the love child of Satan and a salmon. NXT 2.0 continued to be... It sure is a thing, isn't it? And Goldberg announced his intention to actual IRL murder Bobby Lashley for daring to lay a hand on his son. Those are all the big and very dumb and very stupid things from the week. But what about the smaller, slightly dumb and a little bit ridiculous stories from the week? That is why I'm around. I'm Adam from WrestleTalk and here are the 10 news stories from this week you might have missed. Also, like and subscribe or Goldberg will kill you. We, we, we've tried to warn you. He'll do it. Number one, Alexa Bliss having surgery. Alexa Bliss has had a strange 2021, hasn't she? Originally teaming with Bray Wyatt, she then turned on him at WrestleMania 37, featuring the black goo of doom coming out of her mouth while she sat atop a giant jack-in-the-box and no part of that sentence was made up. After separating from Bray, Alexa went on to introduce her doll Lily, who could wink, hypnotize people, and was generally a spooky nuisance. But at Extreme Rules 2021, in Alexa's hometown no less, not only did she lose against Charlotte, Charlotte then beat her down in a post-match brawl and ripped apart the Lily doll, which Alexa cried about for about seven years. This was done to write her off TV, with reports saying she could be off our screens for several months. Now it's been revealed why she needs these months off, as PW Insider is reporting that Alexa is going to be having sinus surgery. So will Alexa be coming back with a half mask like Seamus did after his nose surgery? Will Lily come back with her? Will Lily wear a half mask like Seamus did after his nose surgery? Oh, and also, number two, Seamus is having nose surgery. Again, he's doing it again, the mad lad, clearly not content with having nose surgery the one time. Seamus revealed on Twitter he was going for a second round nose surgery, calling himself the two times WWE nose job champion, and then posted up a follow-up tweet of him with a thumbs up post-surgery. Well, we're very happy it went well, and if he came back with a half mask last time, does that mean he's gonna come back with a full mask this time? Will he go for a nasal three-peat? How many does he have to have until he gets one for free? Well, at least Seamus and Alexa Bliss are the only two prominent Raw wrestlers to be out of action with an injury. Oh no, wait, number three, Randy Orton not cleared. Oh dear, Randy Orton missed last week's episode of Raw, leaving Riddle to face AJ Styles in a stonker of a match, BT dubs. Riddle made the very funny joke of looking to the skies and saying he missed him and was thinking of him. But to be fair to Riddle, the fans also had no idea where Orton was. It was then revealed that Randy Orton had not only missed Raw, but also a house show at the weekend. And now it's been revealed by PW Insider. This is because Orton was not cleared to perform. No word on whether this is an injury, COVID related or anything else. So whatever it may be, let's hope Orton is okay and he can make a speedy recovery. Number four, the baddest baby on the planet. The baddest woman on the planet, Ronda Rousey, hasn't been seen in WWE since WrestleMania 35. Can you believe it? In 2019, that was 10 years ago. Despite signing a reported three-year contract with WWE in 2018, Ronda hasn't been around at all, even taking some leave to go on, this is what she called it, not me, an impregnation vacation. I do not like that. Well, it eventually worked and Ronda revealed she was pregnant early this year and now finally, the baddest baby on the planet has arrived. Named after her husband, Travis Brown's Hawaiian heritage, Ronda and Travis welcomed their daughter, Laakia Makala Pua Kalanipo Brown, to the world on social media this week. Congratulations to Ronda and Travis. Number five, Cameron's WWE return, question mark? Switching tone entirely for a moment. Do you guys remember the Funkadactyls? What a time to be alive. While Naomi is still kicking around in WWE and being ignored thoroughly by the definitely not general manager, Sonya Deville, the other Funkadactyl, Cameron, was released by WWE in May 2016 after a brief stint with NXT. Despite debuting in AEW in 2020 with her real name Ariane Andrew, being eliminated from the first round of the AEW Women's Tag Team Cup tournament, she wasn't signed by the company. In a recent interview on The Wrestling Inc. Daily, Cameron revealed that she had recently reached out to WWE to return, even speaking directly to Vince McMahon himself. She mentioned that she'd seen Naomi recently and thought she missed being a part of the wrestling industry and wanted to go for the Women's Tag Team Championships with her. And honestly, best of luck. It's better than Naomi just not doing anything. Number six, Ryan Sakoda passes away. Some sad news now, as former WWE star Ryan Sakoda passed away at the age of just 46 this past week. Sakoda was originally brought in as an enhancement talent in 2003, but was signed to a contract later that year. He had a brief run on SmackDown, teaming with Akio and Tajiri before being released in August 2004. In 2015, Sakoda was one of a group of wrestlers who filed a lawsuit against the Big Dub, alleging that they were seriously injured during their time working for the company and that the company had known for years about the serious and 
debilitating injuries their wrestlers were sustaining, but were only interested in selling violence. This case was permanently dismissed in the Supreme Court in 2020. Condolences to the friends and family of Ryan Sakoda. Number seven, Roosh contract expiring. One of the more exciting talents to come out of Ring of Honor in the last few years has been Roosh, the former Ring of Honor champion. As a member of Los Ingo Bernablas alongside one Andrade El Idolo, formerly La Sombra, it would certainly be interesting if Roosh were to explore options outside ROH. And wouldn't you know it, Roosh revealed this week to Sports Illustrated that his contract with the company expires in January 2022, and he's open to all offers when it does. Could we see a reunion of the real-life very good friends in AEW, or potentially could Roosh head over to Japan to reinforce LIJ, or just maybe, just maybe, he'll join Los Intangibles to Wrestle Talk, the best and coolest faction in all of wrestling. Number eight, iTunes Gold, Bay Bay. And speaking of huge signings in AEW, despite both Brian Danielson and CM Punk both debuting for the company in the last month or so, it could be argued that the one getting the loudest reaction so far has been Adam Cole Baby, which is kind of nuts to think about. Debuting before Brian Danielson at All Out, fans were immediately on board with Adam Cole Baby joining the Elite, and his entire presentation has helped with that being exactly the same Adam Cole Baby from NXT. But now he's standing alongside his Elite buddies. But what's been drastically better than his presentation in NXT has been his new entrance theme. So good, in fact, that the theme hit number one on the iTunes metal chart this week. You know it's all about the boom, Bay Bay. But also, please don't call your finisher the boom, Mr. Cole. Please don't, though. Number nine, Brian Danielson blown away by AEW. But the other man who debuted at All Out earlier this month was Brian Danielson, who went on to have a 30-minute time limit draw against Kenny Omega on national TV in the Arthur Ashe Stadium that garnered five and a half stars and was really bloody wonderful. Danielson has been incredibly open and vocal about almost any topic since joining AEW. And on the Sports Illustrated Media podcast, he mentioned he was blown away by the amount of creative freedom he had in AEW, even saying it was a little nerve-wracking being happy handed a blank piece of paper and being asked what he wanted to do. He said, the first time I had to talk or anything was in Cincinnati. And I was like, what are we doing? Tony Khan was like, I don't know. What do you want to do? Wait, what? Danielson went on to say that he enjoyed the collaborative process of working with a writer in WWE. And when he was told he could do what he wanted, he was, to quote Danielson, like, uh? Safe to say, though, Danielson is in pretty safe hands if his AEW run is anything to go by thus far. My goodness, that match, though. And number 10, the John Huber Legacy Foundation. Let's end the list this week on some heartwarming news, as it was revealed prior to AEW Dynamite emanating from Rochester, New York this week, the hometown of the late great Brody Lee. Real friends and family of the former leader of the Dark Order had set up the John Huber Legacy Foundation, a non-profit organization bearing the Exalted One's real name designed to assist those looking to chase their their dreams but are in difficult financial, familial, or other suboptimal circumstances. This was designed as Huber himself nearly gave up on his wrestling dreams because of difficult circumstances, but he pushed through and became Luke Harper and Brody Lee, and so the Legacy Foundation hopes to replicate that success by connecting people with experts in areas like business planning, artistic management, public relations, brand management, finances, and IP law. A wonderful idea for a wonderful legacy for a wonderful man. And that's our list. What's been your favorite bit of wrestling news this week? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share this video around if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to WrestleTalk for up-to-the-minute wrestling news and jam that jam.